back from Colombia, back on the stream. Ah, oh, Jesus. The longest day at work of my life. I'm exhausted. All right. 9 p.m. at night. What was I even talking about? Right. So, one of my first followers, um, Barbara Young, a.k.a. Young Babs, a.k.a. Barb. <laughs> uh, she, had, she had a question for me today about the kind of repeating fractals and like how to make sense of it and what it looked like. Because they can be really confusing and because they repeat on smaller and larger time frames, like understanding where to put them, understanding how to line them up, um, and understanding that a smaller version of one of them eventually expands into a larger version of itself and into another larger version of itself, and it goes vice versa the, uh, in the opposite way. Barb, this video is, uh, this video is for you. Again, she's one of my, uh, one of my first followers. Um, you know, I want, I want people like Barbara who may have never worked on Wall Street really or traded professionally in their lives uh, to understand this stuff as much as, you know, a 15 year old kid from New Jersey understands it. Uh, I want to be able to explain these things to you um, in the best layman's terms as possible. So everyone can kind of understand. You don't have to get too detailed with it. Uh, so just to get things started, uh, hopefully I have some of this organized. Let's see. Oh my God, the spy chart today. Ashley Cat, where you at? Give me my 388. <laughs> She's gonna be pissed at me. Hey babe. What? Can you get me uh, water? and Skittles and a steak. What? <laughs> chop chop. Who the hell are you clapping at? <laughs> um, okay, back to, back to business. So let's take, <laughs> let's take the repeating fractal. Oh, let me wipe all this stuff out of there. So this is where we are right now, okay? But it doesn't look exactly like this. It looks more like the extended version of this, okay? Still a head and shoulders pattern, but this one is completely unorthodox. And the right shoulder, instead of being lower than the middle one, ends up being higher, forms a UTAD in Wyckoff. Um, which is an up thrust on very low volume right before distribution basically starts and kicks this fractal's ass. So this right here is this, but it's extended more. And the end of this fractal is this. So you have to kind of combine the two. And this is all before the major January fractal completes, which is looking to be sometime towards the end of the summer. Um, I think this is going to happen like it's got to be pretty fast because this is the bottom of the S&P 500 right here in mid-June ish. So I think they're going to drop it into mid-June, complete this, uh, the pre fractal to the Jan run up. You get your ultimate bottom and then we make our serious move up, but it's not going to be that fast. Um, if you guys can tell, like I, I just kind of mentioned, they keep extending and pushing out the time. Uh, of the fractals so because they extend it it just looks differently like it's not going to come in and like look like this it's gonna look like it will do this but it will be dragged out something like you know what I'm saying like it'll be on more of a diagonal but it's still going to happen it's just gonna take a little bit longer time so uh, I just looked it up what do they call that when there's like a picture and I talked about this in my first video. There's like a picture of someone's face and their face, like say it's like Kobe Bryant's face and in his face, like his eyes, his nose, his lips are all made up of 
larger, I'm sorry, smaller versions of his face. Um, I think it's called, I just Googled it, it's called a photo mosaic. That's what is happening here uh, with the algorithm. So for everyone, and, and Barb again, this is for you and, and anyone else who just kind of wants to understand. Okay, bars pattern, pre-January move, okay? While we are filling this out on a smaller level, right? Smaller time frame, smaller and lower top end on the price ranges, like this, right? Like this, and here is your 360, 370 low, right? Before we run. This is also the same thing as this. All you have to do is expand it so you can see it. So Barb, when you were asking me before, you were like, the January run, it's gonna happen at the end of summer, and it kinda didn't make sense. It's the same fractal, repeated over and over again. In shrinking iterations, as we're completing distribution and in expanding iterations as we're moving up through accumulation. So if you take the one that we just had that we were looking at well, on the short term that we all believe is going to be running basically in the April 10th range and you expand it, it's the same thing. It's right here. And this, look, where June would be the low it's, it's just like this. It's the same exact thing. Right? And then you get your market wide bottom and then you get your run up. And that's your January fractal that you complete. Um, and this is why like, it depends highly on what's going on at that time. Like we know earnings are gonna be, you know, sometime in that September range, October range, whatever it is. Um, but depending on how much you extend it, we don't really know what the timing is going to be until we get closer. We have a solid idea though of where the bottom of the entire market is going to be because of everything going on. Um, with rate hikes, inflation, uh, you have earnings revisions coming up that I've been saying for probably, I shit you not, probably 14 months. I've been talking about earnings revisions. You cannot hike rates for a year straight without it completely hurting corporate earnings across the board. Um, corporate earnings are what drive the S&P. The S&P is a, the equity market is, is risky. <clears throat> it's a risk asset. Um, the tech companies, these growth companies, right? When Powell started pumping in $120 billion a month into the stock market um, via quantitative easing, which is the act of exchanging bonds for cash, so he's buying bonds, taking them out of the system and injecting liquidity into the market. There was so much money free flowing between banks with zero interest rates at that time. The tech firms were able to borrow just a ridiculous amount of credit. And when you have more demand because there's low interest rates and you borrow more, then there's expansion, right? Keep pumping money into the system, more expansion, more people get hired, right? The labor market is strong, but, um, that's all changed now because when Powell went on his yearly raking height, uh, height <coughs> rate hiking campaign, he's just he's corking that up. So the opposite is happening now. But the problem is it's and it's a lagging in effect. Um, it's a lagging effect. So it's not something you were going to see like last June. Like that's why it's taking another year. And like a lot of people are talking about like oh like earnings are fine. Like not really. Like do you remember when earnings came out for Q one? Um, during Q1, 4, Q4, they were mostly flat. You know, the tech companies weren't blowing things out of the water. They were kind of barely keeping their head above. And if you think Q1 that we are currently going through, that's going to be released in Q2, were better, you're you're sorely mistaken. Um, these rate hikes are, are killing everyone. It's completely reducing demand. Um, you know, the, the payments on everything, every single loan, mortgage loan, car loan, credit card payment, has risen exponentially, right? So we're paying off more debt. Um, this is about to get pretty bad. Uh, it is.
it's gonna it's gonna be fast it's gonna be really fast and it's gonna be like what no one expects you know we just had FOMC everything you know Powell said about hiking 0.25 uh, a quarter BPS and everything is like kind of fine the S&P is about to make it probably its final leg up everyone is going to psychologically think like oh hey you know Powell hiked uh, a quarter stock markets okay we're off to the races the memes are running we're back and they're gonna rug pull it so yeah Barb just to kind of summarize that that's really it like anyone copy and pasting any fractal you know and basically saying like this is this and it's going to look exactly the same has no idea what they're talking about yes the fractals will repeat but they're going to look different the um, size of them is going to be different the price ranges are going to be different and the timing is always going to be different but the math never changes the retracements the math doesn't change a lot of times on the runs too that doesn't even change like these last two runs really quick right 160 percent okay 180 percent and then what's this one gonna be if it goes from 360 like I've been talking about 370 right to 920 I told you guys like 940 160 percent it's the same goddamn thing I promise you I will bring you home the entire way this algorithm is beatable I have been posting every single one of my trades I'm probably one of the only people on all of Twitter to do it transparency wise integrity wise I'm telling you when I win I'm telling you when I lose I'm going to prove to you that this thing is beatable okay and if Again, I'm not a financial advisor. I've worked on Wall Street 11 years, so you take from that what you want. You're grown adults, you follow whoever you want on Twitter, you take whatever advice you want on Twitter. I'm not in control of that. Um, but this is what I will be doing. I appreciate your guys' time again, and I hope you can understand a little bit more about how the fractals work. So, um, Barb, I hope that helped. Um, just remember, it's, it's the same thing repeated in smaller or larger versions, so when I post the bars patterns, I'm just doing it so people that don't really understand can have a visual and can kind of make more sense of it. Again, if you guys have any questions, um, hit me in the DM. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'll see you on the chat.